Hello everyone. Our job for today is troubleshoot multi-area OSPF V2. A large organization has recently decided to change the network from single area OSPF V2 to multi-area OSPF V2. As a result, the network is no longer functioning correctly and communication through much of the network has failed. As a network administrator you must troubleshoot the problem, fix the multi-area OSPF V2 implementation, and restore communication throughout the network. To do this, you are given the addressing table above, showing all of the routers in the network including their interface IP addresses and subnet masks. You are told that in Area 1 communication to the 192.168.4.0-24 network is down and that router R2 is unable to form an OSPF adjacency with router R1. In Area 2, Communication to the 172.16.1.64-27 and 172.16.1.96-24 networks has been lost and router R4 is unable to form an adjacency. Area 0 is behaving as expected. Part 1. Use show commands to troubleshoot OSPF V2 Area 1. Step 1. Check the router configurations in Area 1. Because R2 is not forming an adjacency with R1, console into R2 and check its interface IP address configuration and its multi-area OSPF V2 configuration. Use the show running config command to view the configuration. As you can see, the OSPF router process configuration the network statements, including subnets, wildcard bits and area numbers are correct. On R2, issue a show IBRSP interface command to check the hello timer interval configuration. As you can see, R2S Hello Timer Interval Configuration set to 10 is the default settings. The dead time interval is 40. And hellos being sent. If R2S configurations and settings are correct then the problem of not forming an adjacency must lay with R1. Console into R1 and check the network interface and OSPF V2 configurations in the running configuration. As you can see, the G0-0 interface is passive interface so R1 can advertise to R2. To solve the problem, we must remove the passive interface configuration in OSPF1. If the problem has been corrected, R1 should receive a syslog message to the console showing an OSPF adjacency change from loading to full. So now, R2 is forming an adjacency with R1. Step 2. Check the router configurations in Area 2. Because it was reported that the network has lost contact with the Area 2 subnets 172.16.1.64-24 and 172.16.1.96-24. Verify this at the Area 2 border router, ABR2, using the show I brute command. As you can see, the ABR2 routing table doesn't show the two subnets.
ABR2 has two neighbors. 3.3.3.3, neighbor ID signifies R3, because the IP address belongs to 172.16.1.32 slash 27 in area 2. Because ABR2 has formed a neighbor relationship with R3, the problem may lay with the OSPFB2 configurations on either R3 or R4. Console into R3 and check the OSPFB2 configurations in the running configuration. As you can see, on R3, the 172.16.1.64 network was advertised in Area 0 into of Area 2. So to fix this problem, we must remove that network statement first, then add the correct network statement with Area 2. Now, R4 is forming an adjacency with R3. Verify that the R3 routing table has routes to all of the networks in all of the OSPF areas. R3 is missing the route to area 1. It appears that R3 is missing the OSPFB2 inter area 192.168.0.0 slash 21 summary route. To solve this problem, completely remove the OSPFB2 routing process from router R3 and then re-add it. Now, the OSPF internally route to the 192.168.0.0 slash 21 subnet is in the routing table. That's all for this activity. Thanks for watching.